Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. on the air with Karen and Ann. I can't believe we finally <laughs> made it. Good job. <laughs> it's the Karen and Ann Show, also it. known as Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Look at us go. I know. Ain't we fancy. And we're trying out new mics today. So if our sound sounds kind of weird, it's because the sound engineer is inexperienced and that'd be me. I think she's the best sound <laughs> engineer we've got. Well, it's the best money that <laughs> it's the best one we can afford. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Yes. I hope everybody made it through the the Merry Christmas holiday. Yes. We're, we're in the halfway point between Christmas and New Year's. And so, you know, Counting I'm in down a, the days. Counting yeah, down the days. Till, till the clock. Not the clock. The Oh, sorry. That's my doorbell. Anyway, counting down the days until the calendar turns officially. I mean, I can't believe we're almost to 2024. It's ridiculous. Ugh. Yeah, lots of good things coming our way in 2024, I think. Oh, I'm please, I'm certainly please. praying for it, for some good stuff. Let's leave the bad mojo behind. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I would really appreciate we've had some. We've had some bumpy roads in 2023. It's been a rough year. Mm-hmm. So I'll be honest with you. It's been a rough year. Yeah, but we're hoping that 2024 is better because you always hope for better. Oh, you hope for better, but you know, we're very resilient people. Yeah, we we can do things to help make it better. <laughs> and then we can do things to help make it not as bad. <laughs> so you choose, <laughs> you pick, whatever you pick. That's right. So you're in the kitchen this I week. I am in the it's kitchen. It's all you. All yes. you Yes. And so what I've come up with today is not something sweet, but something practical. Because <laughs> we do need a little bit of a break from the sweet. We really do. Yeah. And we need something practical. So what <laughs> I did was I went and I found a brunch casserole. Ooh, fun. New Year's Day is coming up. People going to get up hungry and you're going to get up tired. So oh, go nice. ahead and prep it out now. <laughs> Email us, get the recipe, we will send it to you, and then you go out and get your ingredients. It has to refrigerate it overnight. Oh, okay. I actually have mixed all of this up, but it's refrigerating, so you won't get to taste it till tomorrow. Well, dang. I know, but I'm sure it will be yummy, and we'll we'll definitely put pictures out. What's it called? Well, it's called Holiday Brunch Casserole. Oh, well, that makes sense. But I'm calling it New Year's Day Casserole. Survival That's Casserole. Good. That's a good name. And just go ahead and tell your family right now, it's also okay to have eggs for dinner. Oh, yeah. So you can have <laughs> this for breakfast, give them a sandwich for lunch, and give their leftovers for dinner. Absolutely. There if you, you want to go real fancy, do a side salad with it for dinner. <laughs> and then, then it doesn't feel so much like beef. A fast. salad. So there this has shredded hash brown, the frozen shredded hash browns. Oh, yeah. So orita. Those are yummy. I mean, let's just say it. And it's got a pound of bulk pork sausage. So like the Jimmy Dean roll of sausage. sausage. And then you you brown it and you drain it. Uh-huh. A half a pound of bacon strips cooked and crumbled. Bacon and bacon sausage. Bacon and sausage. We're going for it. We're wow. going for the meat lover's brunch yeah, today. Yeah, I mean, if you are hungover, the, the this salty is, meats, that's your good. Your salty meat good and your, your good protein yeah. from your eggs. I mean, this is going to really get you going. Seriously. It also calls for a medium green pepper. We don't do green pepper in my family, so we did orange pepper. Okay, yeah. Orange pepper is a little easier a to digest. A little easier. It doesn't talk to me for a week. Right. And um, one green onion. Nice. Two cups of shredded cheddar cheese divided. Four large eggs. Three cups of 2% milk. One cup of reduced fat bisquick and half a teaspoon of salt. Oh. And then we did pepper to taste. Okay. Because I like pepper on everything. Now, when you do your sausage, do you get the spicy one? Some people like that spicy I sausage. didn't. I really wish that I had gotten half and half. Oh, right. Yeah, and then come 
and then combined them because it would have given it a little bit of a pickup. Yeah. But I have some people in my family that are very delicate. <laughs> And that would undo them. And so I really, you know, I'm trying to be practical here. And this is something that I'm hoping that we're going to actually eat. And and so I didn't and want enjoy, to enjoy, right? Yeah, well, and enjoy. I didn't want it too spicy. So, but that I would prefer that for myself. I think my son would do all spicy if he could. All right. So you so, got eggs, sausage. So you pretty cheese. much combine everything except for one of the cups of cheddar cheese. So you combine everything. You spray a thirteen by nine inch bacon dish we pretty much let's see we combined the hash browns the sausage the bacon the pepper and the onion and tossed it all like mixed it all together and then in another bowl we did our eggs milk bisquick and salt and you whisk that around till it's well blended then you you put your dry ingredients first. You layer your the sausage bacon mix uh-huh. in your pan, your dish, and then you pour over the the, the wet egg, ingredients. The wet ingredients. Mm-hmm. The first bowl has cheese in it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was like, where did my cheese go? So you do your your pepper, your onion, your two um, your hash browns, your two meats, and and one cup of cheese. So it's half the cheese that you have. Okay. And then you pour the wet stuff over it, and then you sprinkle the other cup of cheese on it. And then you cover it, and you refrigerate it overnight. The next day, you take it out and put it on the counter while you're preheating your oven to 375. You bake it uncovered for 30 to 35 minutes. Let's stand 10 minutes before cutting. Voila, you've got breakfast for everybody, and you can go back to bed. (laughs) And then just remind yourself you're having it for dinner, too. And then, um, and then it's a happy new year for everybody. There you go. Yeah. How do yeah. your black eyed peas and stewed tomatoes fit into that? Well, your pork is in there, but the, the pork is in there. So we, I, I already told my husband that I will do like probably pork chops or pork oh, roast. Okay, I wonder because we do the we do that, and then we always do the black eyed peas and stewed tomatoes and collard greens, right? For all to bring you all the good luck and prosperity that you could possibly reap upon yourself. And here's how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> for many years, I did the pork and the collard greens and the black eyed peas and stewed tomatoes, which I detest because yes. I don't like a, a, a bean. bean. I don't. I don't mind a green bean if it's cooked the right way, but any other kind of bean, you don't enjoy a legume. A legume, no. <laughs> you're That's not. No. You're. You just don't enjoy it's it. Just a no. Right. So I would just put it in my mouth and swallow it like yeah. soldier through, wishing yes. for all that good luck. But I didn't find that it really brought me the luck. <laughs> so I found now that I know. It's just it's a just, no, and you're going to just throw caution to the wind. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. yeah I don't blame yeah. you at this point. Actually, I'm pretty sure I had the black eyed peas and stewed tomatoes last year, mm-hmm. and the year started off terribly. So. I'm yeah. definitely not doing that this year. No, we're not doing it. I'll find I mean, some I'll other... do it just because we enjoy that meal, and yeah. it's the it is the one time of year that I make it. Yeah, but if you guys like it, it makes yeah, sense. We enjoy it, but mm-hmm. it's torture. I know it's torture for you. I'm gonna have to look up some other things that are good. So instead, we don't have to have. I don't think we have to have collards. I think. You could have kale, which I'm not eating. Oh, no. Collards, you might be able to substitute some cabbage in there, maybe. I don't mind a collar. I it's love not a collar. It's the collar that's the problem. Yeah. It's the stewed tomatoes, which are, look. Uh, and those stupid black eyed peas. And which I mix are just those two gross. things together. Just so gross. And we really enjoy. Ugh. Enjoy. I know, likey. <laughs> I know. So we'll st- I'll still do that traditional oh, okay. meal at some point during the day. But this breakfast casserole, I mean, I'm making this breakfast casserole tomorrow morning. Right. It's so, not even New Year's yet. No. Like, this is just <laughs> this to get us through. Right. Because I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. Your people are going to be very excited tomorrow for They're a hot gonna breakfast. Be, um, they are not going to know what happened no. because we just haven't had any breakfast since right. Christmas Day. <laughs> we just have. We just have been ignoring oh, the hey, fact that let's we let's talk about our cooter boards on Christmas. Oh Coral my Queen. God, we, we it. cooter boarded it up. I mean, it's fancy taking a humorous trip down a random topic each week. You do well. You're in luck. Casting Views, presented by me, Dan, and a host of guests, bring you just that. With topics from the world of entertainment, science, sport, and everyday life, there's bound to be a topic that's going to inform and amuse. Catch Casting Views every Sunday on all listening platforms now. 
if that's the way our year is going, it's going to be if that's outstanding. any indication of where we're headed, we are headed for uh, big things because we, we, we cootered, cootered it. it. <laughs> we cootered the hell I out mean, of it. I mean, every meal had a cooter in it. There was it. a cooter somewhere. <laughs> Maybe that's what this whole year's been missing all Maybe. along. Maybe. I got a lot of compliments on my cooter board. I know. Well, you did real good. I, I, I was pleased. Just pleased as Pleased as point. I was. I'm so <laughs> glad. All right. Well, I have discussed with you what I did in the kitchen. So now you can discuss with me the darkest um, pits of hell for humanity. Okay. Well, <laughs> I kind of went in a little bit of a different direction this time because okay. today... Uh, there was a very big headline today oh. in the news about an early prison release for Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Uh, yes. So I thought I'd do a little recap because, mm-hmm. you know, she's all over the media about who she is and why she was in prison. Now, there are tons of shows out there. I think there's documentaries. Oh, there's I think so many. Everybody interviews and documentaries and yeah, it's news just, articles yes. online. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's tons of stuff. I didn't I haven't watched any of those things. I, I haven't think. either. I know the case. I mean, I've I've I'm familiar with the case, right? But I went mm-hmm. back and did online research on it. So, if Good. you want to find I'm just doing a recap. If you guys want to di- dive deep into it, just look up her name because you're going to find all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Gypsy Rose Blanchard was the daughter of Dee Dee Blanchard. To get a real understanding of Gypsy, you kind of have to understand the deep, deep mental flaws of Dee Dee. When Gypsy was just three months old, Dee Dee was convinced that Gypsy had a sleep apnea. So she took her to the hospital. They did tests. They did overnight stays. And the doctor said she does not have sleep apnea. But Dee Dee didn't care. <laughs> When Dee Dee thought yeah. she had something, that's just what it and was. And she didn't listen to the doctors. No. The next thing she came around and said, well, I think she has a chromosomal disorder. Well, how did she figure that well, out on her own? at one point in her life, she was a nurse's aide. So she did have a little bit of a medical background. A nurse's aide. A nurse's aide. That is correct. Okay. A nurse's aide a doctor does not make. That is correct. <laughs> but you still have some medical knowledge. You do. You know how to read medical words and understand them. Yep. And if you work day to day around the medical community, so you you do have some insight okay. into some things. Mm-hmm. As far as going back into Dee Dee's childhood, I didn't really see anything in any of the media coverage where she had been horribly abused or came from a really bad, horrible family which is kind of what I thought I was going to find. Right. But I didn't find that. I I found that she had been dishonest. Her family members said that she used to steal from them. But other than that, I didn't see any like deep-seated, oh my God, this is like a long line of abuse and this is why these things keep continue to happen. All right. So Gypsy, uh, Didi has had the baby. She's She's taken the, we've now got a chromosomal disorder that was causing problems like with vision and hearing. And then she finally decided, oh my God, my baby has muscular dystrophy. Oh. Right. And now this has happened like over many, many years. And she actually got a walker and a wheelchair and made Gypsy use those. Even as a child, she was, she used a walker. Okay. Like as a top. Like a, as a toddler? As a tot, yeah. She went to the doctor and, you know, in order to get diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, they do a muscle biopsy. Yeah. And they, they look for those traits. Yes. That's just Since so... they didn't have any. That And it has to be so painful for that child. Right. Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert, two titans of cinematic review. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong, but always captivating. Your host, Antonio, of the Cult Worthy Cinema Podcast and Justin Henson of The Movie Wire are here to take you back to the balcony. I really don't do reviews, but for me, it's more about like, hey, everyone, these films exist. When we go into Siskel and Ebert, we're not always going to agree with Siskel and Ebert, but, you know, there's some aspects we make. And I think with each episode we're going to do, we're going to understand these guys a lot more than we think we have in all the decades that we've been reading their stuff. The Balcony debuts Tuesday, January 2nd on YouTube and your favorite podcasting platform. Join us. And so the doctor said, no, she does not have that. But when Dee Dee went home and people said, what, you know, what did the doctor say? She said, she has it. She's got it. You know, you can get medical equipment from a lot of places. Oh, yeah. You don't necessarily have have a prescription prescription for it, Uh you know. 
if you have contacts, especially if you're seeing that your young child has these terrible things. Yes. Most people don't want your medical records. They want to help you. They do. Absolutely. So they'll donate things. She had actually even convinced her ex-husband, Gypsy's father, that all of these horrible things were happening. Okay. They, they would even go to Special Olympics sometimes. So the dad was not tuned in to, they did, Gypsy did not live with him. Okay. He paid child support in the amount of $1,200 a month. Okay. And that seemed to be more than enough money for them because they were getting a lot of charitable do- donations. Okay. Year. So did Dee Dee not work? Dee Dee did not work that I could tell. Okay. While Gypsy was young. Right. Because Gypsy had all of these terrible problems. Oh, and she needed to, to take yes. care of her. I get it. Yes. Okay. So at one point, he even told the doctor that Gypsy had a really bad, she drooled a lot. Oh. Terrible drooler. Terrible, terrible drooler. And when Gypsy would go to the doctor, she would drool. Okay. And the doctor was like, all right, well, let's see if we can help you with this. So they gave her some Botox shots in her saliva glands. Oh, my God, that's going to hurt. And, and freeze those up. Yeah. Dee Dee said that didn't help. It didn't work. Oh, Still, no. she was drooling, drooling, drooling. So they eventually decided to remove those glands. <gasps> yes. The next thing she came up with is she's also been started having some seizures. Oh, no. Well, seizures are not an easy thing for a doctor to capture. No, especially if you don't see it when it happens. Correct. So they put her, put Gypsy on anti-seizure medication. Okay. Scary, right? So yeah. So very scary. The combination of her not having the saliva glands are, are in, they're, they're important. They're very important. Right. And it caused a lot of tooth decay. So it, it yeah. actually caused her front teeth to completely rot out between that and the seizure medication. Oh, my God. And by this point, Dee Dee was actually feeding her through a feeding tube. Now, she had also convinced Gypsy that Gypsy was sick, which was very confusing to her because she didn't feel sick. Right. But you you have the uh, the authoritative voice of your whole being. Right. It's telling you that you have You're these sick. ailments. Right. You wouldn't know as a child you would. You wouldn't even know to question it. Exactly. And you don't know how you're supposed to feel. You just feel what you feel. Right. And and her mother shaved her head. So Gypsy was bald. And her mom said, I'm going to shave it because you have to have chemo. And you're going to lose your hair anyway, so we may as well just shave it off. Why was she having chemo? She didn't tell. She did not tell Gypsy the reason that she was having chemo. She just said it was part of her treatment. Okay. In 2005, when Gypsy was around 14, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. And I probably forgot to say they were living in New Orleans okay. at the time. You did not say that before. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Katrina actually destroyed the apartment where Dee Dee and Gypsy were living. So they moved to a shelter in Covington, which is not too far away, that, is, that, was, that had been set up for people with special needs. Oh, oh okay. And because Gypsy had a feeding tube, oh. she qualified for a special circumstance that one of the doctors at the shelter got them into this program. They got airlifted. They moved Dee Dee and Gypsy, who didn't have anything. And at this point, of course, Dee Dee tells everybody, I don't have a birth certificate for Gypsy. Oh, and all oh. of her medical records have been destroyed. Oh, my gosh. Right? Oh, my gosh. Right. So it actually was working out in Dee Dee's favor. So they air flighted them uh-huh. from Louisiana to Missouri. Okay. And in Missouri, they got into a program where they qualified for a Habitat for Humanity house. Wow. Habitat for Humanity built them a a custom house with a ramp for the wheelchairs. Yes. And gifted it to them. Wow. They got all kinds of donations. Oh, and not only did it have a wheelchair ramp, they also had a hot tub there for them. I guess, you know, for the muscular dystrophy. Oh, because it would be real good for 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 Gypsy's treatment. Right. And the the, the people in the community did, never questioned. They never well, questioned. Well, would you? This poor, they, they looked at it as this poor single mother. With a special been, needs who child. Who had been telling people that her husband was abusive oh. and that they were trying to, you know, stay away from him, kind of in hiding from him. Work sucks. Am I right, Jay? Yeah, Kay. It does. But luckily, the F My Work Life podcast is here to help you through. In this comedy podcast, we share memorable workplace stories through guests and listener submissions in the hopes of brightening your day, or at least leave you thinking, maybe you don't have it so bad after all. Listen to F My Work Life on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on all the socials at FMWLPod.
they believed that these poor people needed help. After Katrina, they lost everything. They needed to get reestablished and they needed assistance. What did Gypsy's dad have to say about them going to Missouri? Well, he was glad that they got to go to Missouri. And okay. he kept trying to make plans to go. And every time he'd get ready to walk out the door to go, Dee Dee would call and change the plans and say, oh. wait, don't come. She's too sick. Or wait, we've oh. got a doctor's appointment somewhere. Right. And let me tell you, she was taking her to doctor's appointments in Illinois, and she was getting a free ride everywhere. Like, there were companies that were flying them for free to doctor's appointments. Wow. Gypsy was getting make-a-wish wishes. <sighs> yeah. They got to see Miranda Lambert several times in concert with backstage passes. She's got pictures of the two of them together. Wow. Like, the whole kit and caboodle. Insane. Yeah. Again, Gypsy 100% believes that she's sick. As a matter of fact, she thought she was 14 years old. Oh. Her dad was going, like, talked to Dee Dee and said, I want to call and wish her a happy birthday. Yeah. And Dee Dee said, well... She's real confused. Don't tell her she's 18. Oh, what? She thinks she's 14, and it just would be too confusing at this point to try and explain it to her. <gasps> yeah, so when she had lost the birth certificate, she changed her age. So Gypsy's thinking she's 14, and oh the my poor God. girl is 18. Now, she is extremely malnourished at this point. I can only because imagine. Because her mom is feeding her insure through... Through a tube. Through a tube. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now... Gypsy, you know, she got older, she got, she got really confused because she knew she could walk. Oh. And every time they would go to the doctor and she would start saying, I I think I can walk. If Gypsy tried to say something like that, Dee Dee would cut her off in front of the doctor. And then by the time she got home, there would be hell to pay. Oh, really? So she got punished? She got punished. Physically? Physically punished. Yeah. She was either hit with an open hand or she was beat with a, a coat hanger. What? It was not a good it was not a good time for Dixie. This poor kid. Like she's living in hell. She was born into hell. She was born into and hell. And she is captive in her own and life. And she never knew anything different. No. She never knew anything different. But one of these wish factory places yeah. had gifted her a computer. Okay. And as she got older, you know, there was access to the internet. The interwebs. The interwebs. They have a lot the of Facebook. information. Yeah, there's a lot of info out there. So hang on, I'm going to pick Trump. Because he's having some kind of a meltdown. His nightly meltdown. Something else. Mm. He's something else. Edit that out. He's carrying on a little extra weight here. Bless him. <laughs> anyway, Gypsy had been looking on the internet and looking up some of her symptoms. And yeah. she was like, I don't know. Something kind of seems weird. And and to look at her with the shaved head and she's malnourished. Oh, I'm she's sure. Underweight. Yeah. Um, she's probably very pale. Very pale. Yeah. And she's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Not moving around. She's got a feeding tube stuck up her nose. Bless her heart. Eventually, they did go to a doctor in Springfield who suspected that Dee Dee was lying. He did some blood work and he did MRIs to check the status of this reported muscular dystrophy. Right. But all the tests came back normal. So he got in touch with the doctor in New Orleans and said, by chance, I know that the records were destroyed, but by <laughs> chance, do you have any information on this patient? And the doctor was like, yeah, we did a biopsy and it came back normal. She doesn't have muscular dystrophy. Oh my gosh. Right. Unfortunately, the doctor never reported it to anybody. What? He did suspect that Dee Dee had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Right. They don't call it that anymore. Did you know that? What do they call it's it? It's now factitious disorder imposed on another. Okay. That is what's That's interesting. <laughs> I like the other one. I guess he, through some other medical professionals that had dealt with, with Dee Dee in the past, said yeah. that she's going to make your life miserable, it'd uh, be best not to. Just don't get involved. Don't get involved. I guess nobody thought about trying to rescue the kid she was. It doesn't seem like it. I was really disappointed to hear yeah. that. It, you know, even My first concern is if this child's blood work is normal right. and the MRI is normal and I know she doesn't have muscular dystrophy and I'm looking at her and she's got a shaved head and a feeding tube and she's very undernourished. Right. I'm going to worry about her welfare. Yeah. And that's where I think people failed Gypsy. Absolutely. Is they never said, then why does she look the way she looks? Right. Right. Exactly. As Gypsy got older, she she really started to become more aware of her mom's life. She even at one point came across her birth certificate 
But she showed her her real birth date and she asked, she was like, mom, what is this? And Dave said, oh, that was just a misprinted one. I just hung on to it because I didn't have any others. But it was, in fact, it was her real, oh my gosh. her real birth certificate. I know. It's crazy. Gypsy did try to escape from her mother at one point. Oh. Um, they, they had gone to a convention and there's a name for it, but I don't know what it is. When they dress up in costume. Cosplay. Yeah. And they liked, that was like a, like things she enjoyed to do and she could hide her wheelchair you know with the different costumes yeah. and stuff so it was a lot of fun for her but anyway she disappeared and her mom eventually found her in a hotel room with a man oh and gypsy was with a man yeah oh yeah I was know. she in her wheelchair she was but okay. she was telling the man you know she was exposing some secrets okay and when Dee Dee went in she told the man well you're with an underage girl <gasps> you're with a teenager and i'm gonna expose you as a predator. Oh my if gosh. You say any, if you say anything to anybody. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. I was just picking up a chick. Yeah. I was just yes, picking like up a chick at the cost con. Yeah. When they got home, Dee Dee destroyed Gypsy's computer oh, and no. told her that if she ever tried to escape again, she would smash all of her fingers with a hammer. Oh no. Right. And then for punishment, Gypsy was handcuffed and tied to her bed for two weeks. What? I know. Oh, this is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. This is an absolute nightmare. Eventually, Gypsy did get a new computer, and she would wait until her mom went to bed at night before she would go online. She really liked to go into, like, the Christian singles site. Okay. You know, was thinking (laughs) it's a safe place to go. Yeah. And then that is where she met a man named Nicholas Godjohn. G-O-D-E-J-O-H-N. Godjohn. Okay. Good John. I don't know. Some John guy. Nicholas, that's what I call him. Okay, Nick. So this is 2012. Okay. Gypsy would have been around 21. Did she know that? I, she probably still <laughs> wasn't quite aware. No. Gypsy and Nicholas hit it off, and Gypsy told him what was going on in her life. She was desperate for Nicholas to meet her mom because she thought, if I can just get you to meet my mom, maybe she'll like you and we can get married and I'll oh. get out of here. Okay. I just need somebody else to take care of me. Okay. They had kind of come up with the plan that maybe they bump into each other at a at a movie theater, uh-huh. you know, dressed in their costumes. Okay. Cosplay. Cosplay. Okay. I don't know why I'm, my mind doesn't want to talk about that. <laughs> cosplay. <laughs> and it's costume play. Okay. But they call it cosplay. Okay. Because everything has to be abbreviated. Because we don't, we're really busy in this country. We don't have time to say entire words. We have to, we got to shorten it. But yeah, we're we're always in a hurry. That's right. All right. So now it's 2014. They've come up with this plan and then they end up meeting up, but they never bump into the mom and (sighs) they actually ended up consummating their relationship. (gasps) What? In a movie theater? In a bathroom. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no. So the plan didn't go. Doesn't seem overly Christian. (laughs) By 2015, Tipsy and Nicholas. Started talking about murder. Oh, I thought you were going to say marriage. No, murder. You well, they did the M, this, the slow murder. M with your lips. And I was like, marriage. Murder. And you went and murder. <laughs> yeah. The plan was for Nicholas to get in the house while Gypsy and Dee Dee were at a doctor. Okay. Gypsy provided him with duct tape, gloves, and a knife. Wow, Gypsy. Yeah. The plan went off without a hitch. Okay. Um, they came back from their doctor's appointment. Eventually, Dee Dee went to bed. While she was asleep, Gypsy hid in the bathroom, and Nicholas stabbed Dee Dee in the back 17 times. Oh, gosh. While she slept. They took approximately $4,000 in cash that had been that was stashed in the house, uh-huh. just laying around, and they headed to a hotel. They mailed the knife that Nicholas used to his house in Wisconsin because they didn't want to travel with it. They didn't want to get caught with it, so they mailed it to his house. Okay. Then they hopped on a Greyhound bus and headed to Wisconsin to start their life together. All right. Wisconsin is where we're headed. Now we're in Wisconsin. Okay. 2015. After several days of not hearing from Dee Dee, her friends and family became concerned. Her van was in the driveway, which, by the way, was like a custom. I'm sure it was customized for the wheelchair. Right. But she wasn't answering her phone or the door. So they called 911 and waited for the police. The police agreed that there was definitely something suspicious going on. But in order for them to enter the house, they needed a search warrant. Warrant. A warrant. 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 While they were waiting for the search warrant, one of the neighbors said, hey, there's an unlocked window. Oh. What if I 
just opened it and went in to see if anything's yeah. outsourced. And the police officer said, yeah, you can do that, but don't go any further than just where you dropped the, it. The window. So the neighbor went in. To and the window. To the window. Don't the, go to the wall. Don't go to the wall. <laughs> Just drop down where you fall. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Look at you. <laughs> Aren't you something? I'm such a rapper. The neighbor noticed that all of Gypsy's wheelchairs were inside the house. It didn't look like there was anything out of place, but it really was unnerving because he was like, uh, like all of her medical equipment is here. So yeah, where, where is Gypsy? Where is Gypsy? Eventually, the, the warrant did come in and the police went into the house and they found Dee Dee face down in a pool of blood, dead on her bed. Mm -hmm. One of the neighbors said she would check to see if there, you know, if there had been backup, anything. It didn't look like that there was any, anything taken out of the house at all. Just Gypsy. Only Gypsy was missing. Everything else seemed to be accounted for. Okay. And the, the neighbors were in a panic. At this point, there was a neighbor that came up to the police officer and said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was having a conversation with Gypsy, and she was telling me about a guy she met online that she had fallen in love with. Oh. And that she was hoping that she was going to meet this guy, and they were going to elope. Okay. So the police were like, okay, well, we need to figure out where this guy is, because he's he's taken this teenager, underage this girl. Special needs, underage. Right, severely special yes. needs. Right. Who can't live without her feeding tube and like right. how's she getting around without a wheelchair and the guy she's met him online and he's come in and murdered her mother yes and, and then this, stolen her yes and her special needs the neighbor had actually gotten messages from gypsy through facebook and it was screenshots of the conversations that she and nicholas were having oh so the neighbor had saved that information because she just she really was going to try and tell gypsy you don't do this. Right. You're too young. Don't don't try and make this You're plan. too young. Right. <laughs> right. The girl <laughs> had no idea that they were the same age. Right. One of the messages actually had the IP address of where the conversation had originated. Okay. The police were then able to figure out where Nicholas lived. Yes. They did a big raid on the house. They found Nicholas and Gypsy there in the home. And miraculously, she's walking around. She was walking around, enjoying the sunshine. With no assistance. She probably it. was eating a burger. <laughs> I'm sure she had several. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and they both confessed. They didn't deny. Yeah, what had happened. It was good that they they found Gypsy, but it, the circumstances are just terrible. Yeah, they were both charged with first degree murder. The prosecutor decided that because of the circumstances surrounding the case, he was not going to seek the death penalty. That's for either nice. of them. Gypsy's attorney negotiated a plea bargain for her, and her charges were reduced to second-degree murder. Okay. And in 2018, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Nicholas was sentenced to life for Dee Dee's murder, plus 25 years for armed criminal action to be cons served concurrent with his life sentence. Okay. So they went really easy on Gypsy because of her circumstances and the terrible conditions that she lived under for so long. Nicholas didn't get that same. I understand, but he was. So I'm not condoning murder. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I would never, ever. There's no circumstances. But for me, it it pulls at my heartstrings a little bit because he thought he was rescuing her from a dire situation, and he was. And so, I mean, he murdered her mom at her direction. That was her plan, right? And she got him involved in that. But he was doing it because he was saving her from her abuser. Right. I don't know how I feel about that sentence. Yes. Yeah. I know that he has appealed. I know that one, at least one of his appeals has been denied. I don't know if he's exhausted the appeal process. I know that he has been tested because they felt like he was on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, he was also a recluse. Right. So he was not as outgoing. He wasn't popular, like or, a social butterfly right. by any means. He definitely means. had some deficits. Okay. I don't know if his attorney continues to fight that or if it's just like you, you're done, you're not getting out. It didn't say without parole, though. So I, I would assume after he served a certain percentage, he would be eligible. I hope so. I mean, th here's the question for me. Would this man have ever committed a crime like that had he never met Gypsy? I don't believe he didn't seem... To be that kind of a character. Right. It didn't seem... Yeah. Gypsy adjusted to prison life well. 
She told reporters that it was the most free she'd been in her life. I was going to say that to her is like a like a country club. Right. And while most female inmates that go in lose weight in the beginning oh. of their sentence, she put on 14 pounds, <laughs> I'm sure which actually probably made her normal weight. Yeah. Gypsy came up for parole in September of 2023, and the parole board received thousands of letters in support of her parole. Yep. Some from friends, some from family, and tons from social media users. Sure. She took full responsibility for her actions, and she said that she regretted her decision to kill her mother. The parole board granted her parole, and she was released this morning, December 28, 2023. Yeah. Her husband, whom she married in 2022, picked her up. Wait. Yep. She met somebody and social media, baby. She met somebody and got married. While she was in prison, and now she and her husband are... They get to have a life. Have a, they're at a hotel. They're at a hotel <laughs> doing something. Getting their groove on. <laughs> <laughs> we assume. We, we don't assume. know. We don't know what they're doing. So part of her... They did not make Gypsy testify against Nicholas. That was not part of her plea. That's good. But she did testify at his trial. She never lied. She was just honest. She was just honest. I know she was honest, but... C- she I mean, took responsibility, but... The fact of the matter is that he's the one that stabbed Petey. I understand that. I know. I know what your thoughts are in the matter. I'm having a hard time with this. I agree. Because Dee Dee was not a nice person. She was a terrible person. And unfortunately, and I, they found out about a lot of it after the fact. Exactly. So I can only knew. imagine the stuff that they uncovered. I saw a little Twitter post this morning that said there was a quote from one of Gypsy's aunts. Mm-hmm which I assume is like her mom's sister, saying that they were excited for Gypsy to get out of jail and that they had flushed her sister's ashes down the toilet. Oh, my. Because that's what she deserved. When they she found terrible, out terrible. the things they had been doing to that child, that she had been doing yeah. to that child, they were furious. Yeah. They were absolutely furious. And I think that they have been a very good support system for Gypsy now. Yeah. None of them sat around and boohooed that that woman was gone. Yeah. I mean, none we, of them. Dee Dee even took Gypsy out of school, maybe kindergarten. I'm like, sure. She had to, she She's probably never read. had education. An education. She had learned to read by looking at the Harry Potter books. That's how she taught herself to read. Can you imagine how much education she probably soaked up in prison? Uh, I'm I'm sure a whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure a whole bunch. I mean, I, I'm just saying, I, I just hate it that Nicholas is in the position that he's in. I'm not saying he shouldn't do any time, but I don't know how I feel. Like, this is the same thing as if I see a, a dad who finds out that, that their neighbor has been molesting his daughter for the last six years and he kills him. You hope that the court has. I would. I would. It's hope. wrong. You it's, can't get you off can't, free. But. You, no, you have to serve some time. But at the same time, he say he literally saved her from an abuser. We don't know what would have happened to Gypsy. No, they're they're also. She was a held prisoner. When at one point in their life, they had moved in with Dee Dee's father and stepmother. And while they were living with the father and stepmother, the stepmother became, became very ill. And it turned out that Dee Dee was putting that Roundup weed killer in the stepmother's food. She was being poisoned. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And Dee Dee moved out and the stepmother got better. Holy so, crap. Yeah. But again, why wouldn't the dad then go try to get... R- Gypsy. I don't know. I just don't know. I just, I mean, I just feel like this poor girl was just left twisting in the wind at the she hands. She definitely fell through some cracks. Of a diabolical mother who obviously didn't love her daughter. She certainly did not um, provide her daughter any nurturing or any, I mean, it was all she about was Dee Dee. Very severely mentally ill. Severely. And it went unchecked. Yeah. She, as many doctor's appointments as she went to. Somebody should have picked up on it. Yeah. And they should have reported it. Absolutely. So I I feel like the system failed Gypsy in more ways than one. I agree. But now, hopefully she can put all of that behind her. Well, I 
I wish that she could, but I have a feeling she'll be doing interviews for a long time to come. And she will. She'll do a book. I'm about sure it. she'll write a book. Hopefully, it'll be part of a healing journey for her. Yeah, because um, I don't know what state she's in. Wisconsin. There are some states that have passed laws that you that a uh, person that's convicted of a murder mm-hmm. cannot profit off of that story. Yeah, I don't know if it's. What degree murder? We'll see. I don't either. Yeah, I don't either. So I don't know if Wisconsin's that state or not. And my question is, is she, so she's on parole? Yes. Okay. So she didn't just like, she didn't serve out her whole sentence. She got paroled. So she still has to answer to that situation as Early well. Early parole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for recapping. That was You're a very welcome. timely I'll case. normally do something that's in... You know, in the, the news, media spotlight. I, I try to steer clear of it, but um, this was. I just a have lot. a hard time. I know that Dee Dee is the victim of murder. I just have a hard time recognizing her as a victim. It is hard, but but she lost her life, and and you don't deserve to lose your life. And the law says you're not allowed to kill people. I agree. You need to you let can't, the, the justice you system. Yeah, you it. cannot take things into uh, into your own hands. And I get I it. I do wonder what and it was planned if and premeditated. Had taken Jitsi to the authorities, and she said, "This is what is happening in my home." Yeah, I would hope that they could have put her in protective custody, but you don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I know. And Dee Dee had people convinced that she was underage, so she would have had that man picked up for oh, kidnapping. Yeah. Dee Dee could have obviously. She was. Very good at talking she her was, way into situations. Absolutely. Yeah. It's too bad she didn't use those talents for good. I know. <laughs> she would, probably could have really left a, a mark on this. That's right. On this world. Or, she could have been an advocate for children who were really sick. Exactly. But she just, that was awful. Yeah. That was, she was ill. There's no question. Yep. She was ill. So that's it. That's my story. That's what I got done. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're that was welcome. very timely indeed. I really hope that your dog has some type of a, a day of just one day where he's not upset. Oh, you and me both, sister. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. I don't know what to do about Trout, him. Trout has been diagnosed with up with kidney disease and he has switched foods and i don't know if the food is making him have to go to the bathroom more if it's upsetting his stomach which so far i don't see where it's been upsetting but he seems to be more demanding i don't know if he wants me to feel sorry for him because he's got this diagnosis i don't know what it is well since he's he's out of sorts gotten the diagnosis he has been very out of sorts yes i mean the food may not be feed like he may it, it may be an adjustment it's not um because it's healthy prescription food it is. probably doesn't have a lot of fillers in it uh, he and actually so, gets a little bit of the wet food filler with okay. it okay so he's fine okay so i shouldn't worry about the fact that i feel like he's being underfed no plus he's 22 pounds now so he is I a know. Girl. i know but you have to think does any of that have anything to do with his kidney it may disease? very well it may yeah so so everybody but, just keep little trout in your prayers keep him in your prayers yeah. he's struggling he's on the struggle bus and when he's ready for bed he is ready for bed i understand that though i, I mean when i'm ready i'm ready that's he, the end of i it. got in bed at 9 30 last night i was wide awake and wanted to watch tv i kept the tv on and he kept crying i turned the tv off he went right to sleep what a little booger right? he didn't like the light from correct. the tv that yeah correct that's anyway funny. that's right. it listen well happy freaking new happy year guys new year, y'all yeah i hope that we that you will stay sweet and don't murder if you kill people we will talk about you and it will be nice no guys 2024 is all on the way bringing lots of hope lots of prosperity and good health for all of us so keep your head on a swivel don't let anybody take you out that's right all have right guys re- bye y'all bye this has been sugar coated murder podcast a deliciously entertaining true crime podcast like what you heard you can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com don't forget to like our facebook fan page and share with friends thanks for listening to sugar coated murder podcast thank you for listening to believe You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.